Michael Jackson, it simply doesn't matter whether or not you're black or not, or whether you're white or not. It simply doesn't matter. You're listening to Russell Brand on BBC Radio 2. We are here absolutely live. I am doing this show, well, not on me, own. Matt Morgan's just over there, pointing at his ears, baffled and confused. What's that? Because we can't hear anything in our earphones. Hello, hello. We can't, can we? No. What's wrong with this place, Matt? I don't know. Let's make some changes. Make a few changes. You're supposed to be in charge of them switches. I can't help thinking that this lack of audio down our ear rolls is something to do with switches. What buttons is it? Have a press of a button. Don't be shy. Not that one! No, no. How come even G's craning over touching the buttons? Mr. G is here. He's the poet laureate of our show. In a way, what G did did sort of work. Did it? Did it? I can't hear nothing. No, I think... Still can't hear anything. Right, uh, yeah, so anyway, we're live. If you wanted further testimony to our liveness, listen to this shambolic beginning. What a show it was last week, Matt. Brilliant, wasn't it? The there we white. were. Isle of Wight we were. Yes, brilliant stuff. I still can't hear me. Can you hear me? Are yours plugged in? Mm, you maybe know you not. Do Come around here then, you there. And uh, turn this up a bit. I can't hear... Oh, yeah, that's me. Yeah. Oh, it's nice, right. isn't it? It's comforting to hear your own voice yeah, in your head. It's it's not there. You feel lonely. Miss it. Miss the sound of my own voice in my own head. I'll tell you what I've missed. Go on. You're rapping. And that... I've yeah, well, the rapping in black that. or white is the perfect rap. It's not about races. It's places, faces. It's races? where your blood comes Do from. It's where your space is. Oh. I've seen the bright get duller. I ain't going to spend my life beating the colour. <laughs> Would you do that? What, that song? Rap. I know you love my rapping, Matt, but I simply ain't in a rapping mood. Although, could I be any more immersed in black culture now that I'm pretty good chums with Chris Rock? Oh, pretty yeah? tight, me and old Roxy, I call him. <laughs> oh, Roxy, I say. Yeah, well, of course, you know, as you know, I've got the same Hollywood agent as Chris Rock. We've become very dear pals over the past few months, Chrissy, Rocky and I. I saw you there having a stilted and awkward conversation with him. Oh, it may have looked still in an awkward from the outside, Matt, but let me tell you, on the inside, that was a blossoming new friendship. What well, was difficult is, of course, he did the, what I believe is known as the brother hug, you know, where you link hands. Tim Westwood is a famous exponent of that hug in my life. Of course, G does it, but I'm very relaxed to doing it with the G as we are dear friends. Yeah, it's like Chris Rock done that thing, sort of where you pull in and you, you sort of clamp, clasp hands. Bump shoulders. Then you bump shoulders. He bumped my shoulders so he, that three times. I had one of them during our quick chat. Three of them. Jeez, that That's mean, good. That means you're his friend. Oh, well, we, I, I took that to be an indication of closeness. The thing is, on one of them, it went, his shoulder went right in my solar plexus, and I was talking. No, I was going, he didn't. Well, That's all Chris Rock's taller than you. Chris, I go, Chris, it's enough. You've done well with that. Oh, like that, his shoulder <laughs> wanged me. <laughs> oh, bum lick manoeuvre. I <laughs> coughed up a bit of fish finger. But, yeah. I thought it was the bum lick manoeuvre, watching you, hovering round him. Hey, whoa, why are you saying that for, man? Hey, things are cool. You're going down the wrong road, Matt. That is the <laughs> oh, wrong God, road. Not that again. Wrong road. Wrong road, wrong road. Uh, also, anyway, John Rogers, my mate John Rogers, just said he was watching a culture show on one of the channels on the TV set, you know, and he said that Chris Rock was on it, and they goes, oh, Chris Rock, is there anyone you'd like to work with in this country? Well, you know, just Russell, man. Russ Russell. Later, it, we transpired, uh, it, it turned out that it was Russell Grant, and he was just <laughs> got an unusual interest really, in the just, skies. Did he think that you were so famous that you could just say Russell? Correctly, in my view. He thought I was, yeah, so, yeah, that, you know, such fame. Would you ever change Russell. your name publicly to Russell? Would your mm, second book be just Russell? Russell. Russell. Yeah, a boaster's tale. <laughs> a series <laughs> of lies by me. No, I like the old brand bit. I think it's a good bit to a name. So anyway, this is going to be a bloody good show. Uh, it's live, so you can phone us if you want to make a phone call that will be ignored on 0500 <laughs> 288 291, or you can text us 88291. We tend not to ignore them. Russell.brand at bbc.co.uk. We won't ignore those. Later on in the show, we will be talking to comedian Alan Carr. Who we, spoke to, we spoke to him in the old Six Music days. I remember him being on the floor of a train. Going, oh, I'm on the floor of a train. Oh, bloody hell. It was like that, wasn't he? Reading the Sunday papers, wasn't he? Sat he was sat hunched. So get up, mate. Sit on a chair. You know, claim your birthright. You wouldn't even go, yourself. go on a train, would you? Well, not now, no, bloody hell, no, I'll go in a taxi or something, I suppose, unless it was a special train, a steam train, or an express or something like that, I'll go on one of them, I reckon. Or a little train through Monkey World. I'll go on a train through Monkey World, yeah, I thought it's a monkey train, you know, like that, driven by a monkey in a steam engine, <laughs> sort of a steam <laughs> engine driver's hat, like over the engine, like that bloke, him, but we're puffing a pipe, little monkey, I'd do that, definitely. So, Alan Carr's on, if you've got any questions for him, ask us them, we'll tell him him, them questions. And this show is, in my mind at least, very much a bagpuss special with 
Matt and I, and G, you're a fan of Bagpuss, would you say? We all love Bagpuss on this show. Not in an ironic, oh, let's watch kids' TV way, but in an actual, it's really weirdly entertaining, absorbing, and as if there's a hidden agenda to it. Well, we'll find out once wrong when we talk to Oliver Postgate, creator of Bagpuss and voice of Bagpuss and Professor Yaffle. Wow. Yeah, so he's going to be back again. In fact, I think Nick, our producer, unless he's in some sort of guilt-ridden frenzy, has put <clears throat> some like samples of uh, Professor Yaffle so we can have a listen to him. Can you see him written anywhere on your special board? He's uh, coming here. Oh, wow. Go on then, press some things, Matt, mate. This is is the, play, if you're a young person, Backpuss was a stuffed cat. He was in a second-hand shop. He had different adventures. You idiot. He had different <laughs> adventures each week when uh, Emily, the girl who owned the shop, bought in objects. Yes. Backpuss, Professor Yaffle, the mice, etc., would mull over these objects and discuss what they might be, restore them to order, then put them in the shop window. That was the format pretty much Good every week. filling. Well, Did and they... also, vital info. You oh. know, move people along. It's that kind of professionalism that led Chris Rock to call me that bloke from England. <laughs> <laughs> it's that kind of proximity. Hang on, I think Go someone's on. here. It's Professor Yaffle. Hold on. He's getting very silly. Too silly. <laughs> I will not have anything more to do with you until you are properly serious. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's obsessed with things being serious, isn't he? Because the reason we started thinking about backwards again was because when Richard Dickie Dawkins, the uh, evolutionary psychologist, came on our show, he, like Matt goes, he's like Professor Yaffle. He just tries to just condemns and undermines things and is cynical. That religion you believe in is nothing but an old myth filled out by people afraid of death. And like, it, you know, and it is a bit like yeah. Professor Yaffle, isn't it? Especially, I mean, he's right in a lot of ways, but you know, he's right in a lot of ways mate yeah you can't condemn that but we'll find out the truth behind bag puss when we talk to oliver po postgate later on on the show what else are we gonna do <laughs> 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 we'll never tire of that so i've got that mouse in my house and i that goes we will fix That's just the sound of joy and innocence, that there. Lovely. A, a joy and innocence that is besmirched when you, Matt Morgan, take that teddy bear that's been made, that, an effigy of me, voodoo teddy bear made by that lovely woman you, that's in my house, you take one of those toy bag puss mice, a female one, <laughs> and position it with the teddy bear as if there's been <laughs> some sort of sex crime committed, don't you? Mm, do you, you do like it to do that. blame it on me? No, I don't think I did I it do. once. Well, how come when I came out of my house earlier today, that mouse was lying on the floor with its skirt up, looking all confused, <laughs> just laying there? No, because it fell there and its skirt went up. Uh, why do you lie? Why do you what tell me? What do you me? think I'm involved with that mouse for? Because I just keep finding it in compromised positions. I put it there to make you laugh. <laughs> it did make it's me laugh. It's just confused you. <laughs> Why is that there? Is it an effigy? Is it a symbol of the future? Let's finally get Noel Gallagher on this show. We haven't spoke to him for ages, have we? We'll get him on the show. We're going to have some lovely music, most likely, won't we? Probably listen to some records or something like that. Yeah, listen to this. This is really lovely. This is from someone claiming to be called Russell Smith. Dear Russell, Matt and G, I've been listening to all your shows for many, many years. My grandmother came out of a brilliant quote the other day and he's written it in script form for us to appreciate has the young russell smith and here it is bring it to life <clears throat> the nan says have you seen she goes uh, the nan goes seen a picture of peter Sutcliffe in the paper this lad goes oh yeah and she goes yeah he was such a handsome man look at him now he looks really worn out <laughs> <laughs> she's not peter Sutcliffe. he's let himself go perhaps it's the pressure of being in broad worn out for the rest of yeah worn out oh god he's really lost his Wish drive all that yeah. Why don't, where's he gone? He had a spark. He had a real razzmatazz when he was arrested, didn't he? He had a certain something. It's Peter Sutcliffe. He's got a twinkle in his eye. It's Peter Sutcliffe. You'll never see him cry. It's Peter Sutcliffe in his dancing shoes. Watch that toolbox. Peter Sutcliffe in his dancing shoes. So that's the kind of musical number you can get from old Russ. Oh, yeah, I've got to play Nickelback bloody song. I know, I saw that What are you doing? Well, the cab driver on it, Danny, was called Abdul. I took a shine to him. I goes to him, yeah, mate, take your trousers and pants down. We'll do this journey of our trousers and pants through. I'm not doing that. I go, you bloody Did you say mate. that to him? You're getting yeah. worse. I say it to people sometimes to see how they react. My driver was an idiot. Well, what was that with him? What he won't do? be listening to this. Of course he, he won't. Why would he, he do? Well, he looked like he was on a booster seat and he was 12. Right, well, like they had a little bucket to lift him up like Just a, a little, yeah, little plastic moulded yeah. chair and he yeah. looked like he'd, I don't know, stolen his dad's car right. and started being a cab driver. He <laughs> didn't know where he was going. My first taxi! Yeah, exactly. Like that, was it? Yeah, and I was stuck in it. You poor sod. 
You look a bit beleaguered and troubled by the old experience. Now. I'd like to say happy uh, diamond anniversary to your nan and granddad. It's their diamond anniversary tomorrow, isn't it, Matt? Yes, it is. They won't be listening to this because they think I'm disgusting, don't they? <laughs> they yes. I've gone with them when no, I met them. No, they don't. They don't. I oh, think well, they've listened to it they before. They think I'm dirty, I no, thought. Well, you well, your dirty. nan said something about me being dirty. She Mind you, it. I did have my hand up her tights. <laughs> now, come on! <laughs> Hold on, I'm not on <laughs> 60th anniversary. That's so, do you get anything off the Queen for that, 60th they do. anniversary? They do, they got a card from the Queen. Bloody hell. Yep. That's all right, isn't it? Yeah, her handwriting's all shaking now since she left you. Met you. Of course it is, <laughs> poor girl. left you. You were never having a relationship. <laughs> we were never officially together. It was very much just a physical thing, to tell you <laughs> the truth, Matt. It was never going to go anywhere. By God, she was hot, that woman. Well, I'd give her a follow at the end of the earth, I would. And you said, Beth Regina, you've made a monkey out of me. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK, so, yeah, lots of good things on the show. We're playing that Nickelback thing for Abdul, even though he refused to bear his genitals at my behest. We will be talking about Gallagher. Play that? Yeah, play a bit of it. You know how it goes? How's it go? Go on. It's one of those songs. Hey, hey, Marty, we're going back to the future. Does it sound like we're stuck out of Back to the Future? <laughs> no. What does it sound like then? Uh, I can't remember, but it's one. Of, it's like that voice. <laughs> that American rock voice. Rock! Yeah. Rock! A rock yeah. star! Well, I like it. Sort of like you're chewing a cigar. Yeah. All right, fair enough. They're getting there. Fine. I don't mind. Nickel back. Let them get, let them get on with it. Do you, want, things... do you want that now then? Mm, I don't know. I think I wouldn't mind hearing Sweet and Tender Hooligan. But well, let's play it now so like Abdul knows. So it's that out of the way. Yeah, get it out of the way. Let's get it okay. over and done with. Right, also, yeah, we want to talk to people about things. I, I'd like some things that people's nans have said like that, like that Sutcliffe yeah. thing. It's quite nice, isn't it, when a nan says something like that? Oh, I don't know about that, darling. Oh, no. Like when my oh, nan started. I once started. witnessed a nan pushing a kid. I've told you this before. Yeah, I like a, this. In a pushchair. Yeah. And the kid was going, but why, nanny? Why, nanny? And she went, because nanny's pipes are all wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Nanny's pups ain't working. How Nanny can't do. That? It's weird, isn't it? What does she mean by what that? What was the question? But why? Why, Nanny? <laughs> Maybe why, she just says why that. Why was there blood in the toilet? Oh, oh Russell. no! I'm so sorry! Disgusting. I don't know. I was just trying to answer a question. The mind is a problem-solving machine. If you present the mind with a problem, it will attempt to resolve the riddle. Stop that! You are being too silly. <laughs> 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 Make him say that thing where we're saying you're not being serious enough. This is getting very silly. That's what I Too like. silly. <laughs> I will not have anything more to do with you until you are properly serious. Properly oh. serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really good. Properly, properly serious. serious. I'm, I'm ready to be properly serious now. I'm very sorry. I've wasted everybody's time. Right, so we play that Nickelback thing. Then we'll be celebrating Bagpuss. We've got uh, Alan Carr coming on. Post Oliver Postgate. Be a bit more respectful to him. Apparently some teacher from my old school called up and all. Really? Yeah, I can't remember. I'll find it. Here's a e What's that about? Missing books or something? Missing books, uh, whittling in the sink. There was an incident trying to keep going to the school even though I'd left by some two and a half decades. There's <laughs> a lot of embarrassment, a lot of room and mongering. Gosh, should, we, should we listen to Nickelback then? Yeah, here we go. Why do you think you'd call yourself Nickelback? Um, what does it mean? Nickelback. Nickelback! Let's, what do you think it means? Let's find out what it means. Guns? He wants his nickel back. He wants his nickel back. It's quite a petty issue to name your band after. Look, I'd really like that back. Uh, uh, if you are listening, <laughs> I was only, only borrowed it, yeah? Nickel back. <laughs> <laughs> that was Nickelback uh, with their record Rockstar it's with some... It's a ridiculous some, uh, voice, isn't it? Please, please, take a pack, I want to be a real dad. Can I have that ten dollars as well? <laughs> yeah, it seems the, he's a finicky pop star, old Nickelback. And there was, of course, additional help from Professor Yaffle, Yaffle yeah. in celebration of it being Bagpuss Week on our programme. Uh, there's a quick a text message here from Sophie, claims to be in St Leonard's. My grandma said of David Blunkett, I don't trust that man, he's shifty. He never looks at camera from Sophie oh, there. Sophie, your nan is racist against the blind. It's quite clear. Though my nan was just racist against other races. Well, you know, that, uh, a saying of mixed race kid. Well, you know, they know for one thing or the other, old idea. Oh, <laughs> but God. you can't help it. That's their generation. Do you know what I mean, she don't know, does she, poor cow? She's dead now anyway. You know, but I tried to convince her not to be, but she... She weren't up for it. I mean, you can't help that. White working class people, they're daft, aren't they? A lot of them, some of them, not all of them. I ain't not racist against them, bleeding nope. Right, okay, I believe we have got on the phone creator of Bagpuss, Professor. Not Professor Yaffle! <laughs> That's not real! <laughs> well, how exactly do you come to life? It's Oliver Postgate. Are you there, Oliver? Yes, 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 wow. yes. Wow. This whole thing is quite getting quite out of hand. <laughs> you can't explain what you're trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> I like it! I'm excited! He lives! He lives! What? What? I do not live. I'm made of wood. <laughs> I sit on a mantelpiece the whole time. 
Why are you oh. so cynical about everything that Emily brings into the shop for? Myself, I'm just interested in facts. I'm not interested in cynicism or anything else. <laughs> I think I'll stop being Professor Yaffle because it hurts, it hurts my false teeth. Oh, that's oh. lovely. Thank you very much for doing that, uh, Mr Postgate. That is very kind you of you. You can't call me Mr Postgate. What should I call you then, Oliver? I don't exist. I think I must be Oliver, yes. OK, Oliver, thank you very much for coming on our show and thank you for uh, the entertaining uh, entertainment you provide us with uh, through the vehicle of Bagpuss. Also, though, you did have a kid show, didn't you, at Small Indeed, Films? Indeed, I did, yes, yes. Uh, Bagpuss the was actually the last of all. My, my alter ego, really, is uh, Nog Bad the Bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah, not. I shall return. Wow. <laughs> that was long before you were born. It was, it was. So that to me just sounded uh, like a man deteriorating <laughs> into madness. <laughs> but like, which I'm sure isn't happening, sir. Um, yeah, with Backpuss, this is the thing that uh, interests uh, us a lot here on our radio show most. Is it that it seemed, that, well, as I, what I've said, is it seems like there was an ideology beyond just trying to feel airtime. It seemed like there was something quite magical and artistic about it. So I want to know what was going on. Well, nothing was going on. The fact was we were, we were just trying to feed the television machine and uh, the virtue of our films is not what doesn't lie in what they are it's what they aren't what do you mean by that that's really i mean mystical. that they're not they're not made by formula they're not made by an enormous uh, enormous uh, at enormous expense mm. and they were made by, just by Peter Fermin and myself and uh, various other people What did he helping. do? He made the puppets, didn't he, Peter Fermin? Uh, Peter Fermin made the puppets. I, and I made the, the films and uh, wrote them and sorted it out. But it was all done in a cow shed in Bleen in the 1950s and 60s and 70s. Wow. And um, uh, nobody was watching us. We had no sociologists. We had no educationists. We had nobody blowing down our necks, and well, that uh, should never happen. We did to anyone, what anyway. was fun. So, did you like? Did you have? What, what did you have? Like a, a, a sort of reefian values to educate and elevate and inform? No. Or, what was it then? Just trying to have a laugh. No fun. Yes. What we, what we liked. It, we're, we're both fairly infantile, and uh, it was a matter of providing enjoyment and uh, having a decent. Uh, the point is, we we were so, we were so bad at animation that we had to have a very good story. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise, people would have noticed that the things were falling about. Yeah, well, I found it sort of quite spellbinding, and we, we've been watching it again as adults lately, and it's still really sort of beautiful and it's, sort of has it's pathos. It's something which, thank goodness, I knew nothing about when I was making them. Uh, t uh, I w went, oh, about ten years ago, no, eight years ago, to a, to a festival, and there was this girl there who was um, a filmmaker, and she was watching... They'd be watching Bagpuss and mm. throwing Bagpuss about like a, like, like a rugby football, and she was in floods of tears. And yeah. I said, what's this tears? What's this about? You know, it's, it's all for fun. She said, no, no, when I was young, we were what were called a dysfunctional family. Yeah. And the only safe place in the world for me then was Emily's shop. Yeah. I knew if I was in Emily's shop with my friends, I was in the real world and I was safe. Although... It uh, Oliver, Emily would not be allowed to run a shop as a nine-year-old, and why did she call it Bagpuss and Co? And oh, she, why does she... It was Bagpuss and Co, and she didn't run it, she, uh, she brought things to it. <laughs> you said it, it, it says at the beginning, it's Emily's well, shop. Was, at the beginning, it says uh, Emily was not a normal girl or something, she had a shop. It says something Emily like had that. a shop, yes, yes. And, and uh, she, she was... Um, uh, it, it wasn't her own shop, because right. it had Bagpuss and, and Co, Co written across the top of it. If you keep a sharp eye open, you can see it. I do. I'm, I'm fully well aware of, of the legend Bagpuss and Co. above the window. Um, so then Bagpuss wasn't like all the other objects in the shop once found. He must have been there to put his name on the licensing agreement. Or oh, yes, yes, yes. He, he was under, we were all under contract to Bagpuss, yes. Uh, it, uh, he, was, he was very generous, though. Oliver, does the entire story take place in Emily's mind? Like, you know, each week? Is it just in... Uh, or is no, it in Bagpuss's mind? The, the actual stories were driven by the objects. Mm. What I had to do was to uh, scout around and find something, an elephant with... a uh, straw elephant without any ears. Yeah. And I would put it down in front of Peter and Joan and anybody who was about, and we would try and think up what, it, what its story was, how it got like that. Oh, right, like the Hamish or the, the ship in the bottle, yeah. the old shoe, yeah, the big favourite uh, it was it, Actually, in some ways, it was the easiest thing I ever had to write. Because you were the, the real Emily. Sorry? You were the real-life Emily. 
in a way, finding objects. Oh, yes, in a sense, yes. Uh, somebody had to, you know. <laughs> mm. I, I, I had to think up the ideas. Of, uh, but I didn't cre create the characters. That was Peter. Excuse me, uh, Oliver. Someone here, we've got an email from Elise in Newcastle. She said that Professor Yaffle was based on Bertrand Russell. Is that not That's true? That's right. Then? She was a mixture of my uncle, G.D.H. Cole, who was a, pro uh, a professor at, uh, at Oxford, and uh, uh, Bertrand Russell, whom I knew were in CND days many years ago. Mm. And they both, both had this tendency to speak rather exactly. <laughs> and of course it was essential that the mice should send him up rotten, which yeah. we also did with my Uncle Douglas. I like those. The mice are like relentlessly optimistic about everything. That's what I really, I really like the. Well, yes, they're 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 a bit uh, they're a bit bolshy occasionally, but um, they are when they strike, don't they? You're a bit of left wing I gentleman. Thing, my strike. <laughs> are you a bit a left wing type of fellow, Mister? Well, Postgate? they were. They, I think, they were social democrats. The mice. They were social democrats. Are you using children's television as a uh, <laughs> vehicle to peddle communist ideals? Not in the slightest. No, no we had absolutely... Absolutely no, absolutely no agenda. Uh, what about now, uh, Oliver? This would be a good time to talk about, isn't it? That you, what's this uh, about? You want to buy up uh, Afghan poppies? There's, a, what's this um, thing? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's on in, on, on my website. Yes, yeah. yes. It's a long way from making children's films. Yes, <laughs> it certainly is becoming a heroin dealer. <laughs> is, uh, quite simple, really. The the uh, the the, um, the uh, coalition forces have been burning the poppy crops. Mm. And uh, when they've finished uh, that in, in Afghanistan, uh, they, the, the farmers have got nothing to live on. Yeah. Uh, if they were, instead of burning them, they were to buy, pay for the poppy crops and buy them, they could set up... Um, um, uh, Morphine uh, distribution. ...factories in Afghanistan. There, there is this endless uh, society which is actually trying to do this. Hmm. And they could uh, um, make the uh, medications from them and uh, the, there would be no reason for the farmers to go back to the Taliban again. Mm, OK, OK, so we have medical opiates instead of street sense, heroin. Yes. And... In fact, it, it, it would be a good way to, to break the uh, hold of the uh, Taliban on the... Um, the drug trade, you know, the mm. illegal drug trade. I imagine which, which then that the reason... 90% of the heroin there is here comes from... It's really from funny to hear that in a sort of Professor Yaffle voice. <laughs> Perhaps you should, use, you should get together, do a special edition of Bagpuss where you talk about the uh, heroin trade in Afghanistan. We will smoke it. <laughs> we will inject <laughs> we it. Will smoke. No, uh, no at all. This heroin is awful. <laughs> it is of low quality. I can't make head or tail of what you're saying. Oh, no. We're doing... Well, Matt was doing, like, singing uh, a mouth song about heroin and then I started doing Professor Yaffle talking about <laughs> heroin. <laughs> yeah, well, it's what it is to be spent spontaneous. We had, I had to think a very long time about anything like that. <laughs> oh, you're I a mean, lovely the, the, At the rate that you work, which is fantastic and marvellous and incredible, but it's so fast. Thank I you. had a, a month uh, or six weeks to make each of these films and so I had plenty of time to um, work out exactly what I was going to do and I had to move the characters yeah, uh, stop animation. Five frames oh. to, the, to, the, to, the, to the second. Second, yeah, it must have been a so bloody work. test of your endurance. Uh, excuse me, this sounds rather brash and uh, probably adverse to your principles, but I, can I, I want to buy them objects. Like, <laughs> Where are they? Professor Yaffle and the mice and Bagpuss, do they still exist they're, somewhere? They're about, yes. yes they're, Who's got they're, them? Uh, uh, Professor Yaffle and, and the mice... Uh, the prof prof Professor Yaffle, uh, there's a... Oh dear, I can't remember the name of the firm. They are they are on the market. Are they? I um, want them. Uh, but not as a toy. Uh, Professor Yaffle isn't exactly cuddly, you see. No, but I've got in a one glass box. I'm looking at on my mantelpiece, but I cannot remember the name of the firm that makes them. I'm terribly sorry. Can we find but, out? Oh, don't worry. Oh, where's the original? Yeah, are, um, Where are the originals? They're, they're, the originals? they're very beautifully made models. Are the originals anywhere? Made and uh, they're, they're, uh, they've got all, all, all of our characters and... Mm. Um, uh, they're, they're very nice, but the heavy ones, ones, like the, the mice whom you were playing just now, <laughs> are, uh, uh, are in the toy shops. OK, but what about the originals? I want the original ones. Have you got them? Uh, no, Peter's got them, and uh, they, they live in Canterbury Museum. 
Oh, they, in a museum? They, they rebuilt the shop in Canterbury Museum so that they're, they're all sitting in the, in the shop and bag pusses oh, asleep. Wow. All right, so it's a Let's bit of there. your bishop has to try and go down there waving wads of bills. <laughs> right, give us those bloody mice, yeah. etc. It'd be, it'd be loutish. Uh, Oliver, thank you so much for coming on our show and thank you for providing us with such uh, beautiful and wonderfully crafted entertainment during our childhood instead of the indoctrination and rubbish that fills television screens these days, a lot of it made by me. <laughs> Indoctrination. I do nothing but indoctrination. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you. You're a lovely gentleman. Thank you very much for your time, Oliver. Oh, you're welcome. Bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oh. Wasn't he lovely? Lovely. What about when he answered the phone as Professor Yaffle? I know. Brilliant, wasn't it? What about when you offered what? to buy the originals of <laughs> your cigar out? Like JR. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're a nothing but an unfit mother and a the originals. Son. I'll take the originals. Give me the goddamn originals, Postgator. Give me Bearcat. I'll take Bearcat. <laughs> hey, if I don't get my hands on Bearcat, someone's getting their nuts kicked in real bad. I want that gang of rats to polish stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how's them rats going to cope with some cheese and a bit of a mousetrap? Also, I'm going to buy up all that smack, too. Get me hands on some Afghan brown. It's good that he's still involved in stuff. He said he was CND in the past. Yeah. Still is, and now, you know... He's a rabble rouser, isn't he? He's, he's a, a bagpuss. Was, oh, let's watch it again. It's, I think we'll find it's laden with Marxist metaphors and symbology. Good. Good. Best thing for it. Get some children with some principles. Russell, I heard bagpuss was a mirror of Stalinist Russia. Ask Postgate, will you? Says Johnny the Gravedigger. Johnny, you wasted our time with your ridiculous inquiries. Hi, Russell. You're right. Bagpuss is quite amusing. We should bring back bagpuss, says people. Hello, Russell and Matt. I enjoyed you being subversive on our usually inane local radio station last Saturday. My eight-year-old daughter has been telling everyone she met. Hmm. wonder what she was telling everyone, this eight-year-old. I wonder if she met you and that got cut off. Hmm? Did you meet an eight-year-old girl there? Don't remember meeting any eight-year-olds, really, so the truth. They're they're pretty distinct by their dimensions, aren't they? An eight-year-old, you'll know them when you see them. All little and everything, aren't they? Right, uh, dear Russell, Matt, Angie, says Sarah, I thought I'd email you after listening to the radio show and hearing Russell talking about Matt's farmyard experience where he showed innocent, alive baby chicks the dead remains of the other baby chicks. In Psychology this week, my tutor said how people who exhibited cruel behaviour towards animals in yeah, their childhood yeah. are much more likely to have psychotic tendencies in later life. Thought I'd better warn you that you could be at risk. Lots of love to you from Sarah and everyone at Russell's fan site forum who have been emailing every week but haven't had a mention. They get mentioned all the time at the fan site forum hello there fan site forum i hope you're okay so matthew it turns out that after all you are a delicious psychopath as i'd always assumed and that's why so are you then why would i ever do kicking your dog down the stairs oh well i hardly think that's as bad as showing (laughs) the spectacle of death to a little baby cuddly easter chicken mom is educational that's true. What was yours? Mine was stand at the top of the stairs where Topsy was not allowed. Topsy, come upstairs, come upstairs, Topsy, come upstairs. Topsy slinks upstairs. Oh dear, Topsy, you know perfectly well you're not allowed upstairs. Kick Topsy downstairs. <laughs> Go to bottom of stairs. Topsy, what happened, mate? Someone kick you down the stairs. Do you want a glass of water? You put that in your book, didn't you? Yeah, I did, actually. How can you get pet as sexy as vegetarian after that? Because I've come through hell. That's why, because the Lord likes to redeem a, a scruff bag, or whatever it's called, a scoundrel, <laughs> I believe, rather than you, your little square showing death to little chicks. Come, let's listen to Sweet and Tender Hooligan by the yes, Smiths, dedicated okay. to you, because you was a little Sweet and Tender Hooligan as a boy, showing all that death to each other. Well, and then what we got to do? Oh, yeah, there's loads of things to talk about. Yeah, put Smiths on first. Well, I think it's a silly song. <laughs> it doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even make sense. It's obsessed with things making sense. That was, of course, the Smiths' sweet and tender hooligan. Morrissey is performing at the Roundhouse in Camden Town all next week. I'm going. Williams is going. Noel Gallagher might come with uh, when I'm going. Do you want to come, Matthew? Yeah, go on then. Don't sound churlish then. G, you want to come? See? Lovely little nod from G. Was that a nod? Well, it looked like a nod. Either that or he went... <laughs> I can never truly tell. Hey boys, my name's my. No- hey boys, my name's Hey boys, my name's Hey boys, my name says so many funny things. Tip milk, tip milk. My name says so many funny things. It's difficult to pick. But the other day, when playing this game called Articulate, we played that at Christmas. Went mad, didn't it? We all got you- a bit competitive. Uh, no one Hold else on. did apart what? from you. What, I got competitive? You got words. <laughs> this is words. This is my thing. <laughs> words. I know about language. Yeah, okay. Rivers your of language. Your poor mother was on your side. <laughs> mother, for goodness sake. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, Christ! God, Janice, it's a seagull! It's a bird of the sea! An aquatic, ornithological creature! What's wrong with you, woman? I didn't think I was competitive. Was I too competitive? A little bit. What about you, yobbing about playing volleyball? It's disgusting, you and volleyball? Nick Lennon, our agent. You don't even remember playing because you're so bloody drunk. That was in the swimming pool. I thought you meant whilst we were playing Articulate. No, mate! Which you weren't focused, though. Articulate, sure. Articulate. I oh, know, even the title's misleading. Preposterous. Anyway, when this uh, Lauren character, when her name was playing it, we describe stuff and the other person guesses what it is. It's a game, yeah, we go like, you know, oh, a, like a seagull, and then you'd have to describe it without using the word seagull, or the word sea, or the word goal. She goes, her description, uh, her description was an Asian country. We guessed for a while and it turned out to be Africa, says Lauren. <laughs> what? <laughs> They're all nan, all lovely and ignorant. Uh, this is from James. He says, a couple of things my nan used to say when I took her for a ride in my new car. Oh, you're doing ever so well. Look, I've even got my own seat. And every time I saw her, oh, you've shot up. Are you caught in? As if uh, the explanation for the increase in height was a result of increased sexual activity. Keep up the show, says James. What's that thing my, my nan used to go? Oh, shame, in it? Just used to look at me. Cockerhead. Shame, in it? What? Well, I'm all right. No, we, we played shame. a game of mine at months where it was called "What's Who's in the Bag," oh, right? Yeah. And then you'd pull out a thing and it says "Who's in the Bag" on one side. What and would it be? What's in the bag? Like Oliver Reed. Oh. So you'd go, "Oh, he was a drunk actor, right?" Played Bill Sykes. She took one out. Blue eyes. Right. Who's in the bag? Which was the name of the game, which yeah. was printed on the back of all the yeah. tokens. <laughs> you missed the point. Who is in the bag? <laughs> no, okay. one. Don't worry about that one. <laughs> Who's in the bag? Who? In the bag. <laughs> <laughs> what about your when your granddad played? What was that one? Your when your granddad was playing oh, one? Oh yeah, what's that one? Boulder dash, where dash. you have to make a fake explanation for a word. So you you might get the word popper snatch, and you'd have to go, oh, it's a type of drug used in the gay community, but by both genders, right? Yeah. Be, and then you know you have to make up an, uh, a, a definition for a made up or for, no for an obscure word, and then there's a true one, and people's made up one. But you what did your granddad do? He said Dartford in every answer. <laughs> oh, this is a word popularised in Dartford. <laughs> so unless the makers of the game were really favouring Dartford in their explanations, uh, they, they were, no, oh, bless him, he's a lovely granddad, your nan bullies him. Hey, Russ, Matt and G, says me, me in Ireland. Last week my nan was complaining of headaches, so she wanted to try alternative methods to stop them. She was looking for therapeutic ways, but instead of saying therapeutic, she kept on saying therapeutic. I didn't want to tell her because it was too funny, <laughs> especially when she rang up alternative uh, medicine <laughs> practitioners looking for therapeutic treatment. I want someone to always therapeutic pubic treatment. That's lovely. Oh. Mimi Island, that's why I gave her that accent. Um, and what's that thing? What about that bloke we know, Cyril? Uh, like, he's a mate of me and Max. He's like a homeless tramp. Looks like Father Christmas, Uncle Albert style tramp. Dead skinny, wears like a leather waistcoat, like silky handkerchief. He's real funny. And he goes out like, oh, well, I was locked up in an asylum for years. And then he's always on about this bloke called John Eggersy. You remember? Well, John Eggersy, he came up me, he pulled my pyjamas one side and he stabbed me in my genitals with his locker key. <laughs> he's always saying genitals. Oh, then I'll, you know, I'll look down a toilet and he try to grab my genitals. But he it's always like, bends stories around to mention To mention genitals. genitals. It's like he's trying to get you to go, do you know that it's genitals, not genitals, and you're messing with us? Well, Why we ne we we've never said that to him. I know, because it's nice, isn't it, that he said, oh, yeah, well, so he grabbed me for my genitals. And then what about out of nowhere when he suddenly announced he was going to the Philippines and having it off with people and go, they are over age, aren't they, these girls in the Philippines? I don't know if they are. <laughs> he said he really <laughs> blows away. And then, like, he once, can't have been, because there's no way He's got a passport. How can he go to the Philippines? He, got he can't have a passport. He ain't even got a house. He lives in a tree. He like, lives so if you live in a heat. tree, you can't get to the bloody Philippines, can you? From a tree. If your starting point is a tree, how are you getting the Philippines? Yeah. It's ridiculous. Unless it's a faraway tree or some other Enid Blind created tree. Right, and what about this other time? I was on, in Belsize you... Park near where I live with him, right? And this girl walked past and he, right, with her mum, a like, young adolescent girl. He goes, oh, she's a bit of a looker. And I goes, oh, yeah, no. And he goes, she's beautiful. I goes, oh, yeah, she will be, you know, when she's ready. Like, and he goes, I think she might be ready now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's well, old Cyril, weird, he? he's a paedophile. What about what he said to you? He's lovely, though. Are you painfully thin? Yeah, are you painfully thin? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, yes, I am painfully thin. It hurts. Thin. My bones hurt my skin. <laughs> so bloody thin, I'm sucked in all nice and thin. Are you painfully thin? Oh. And always trying to find a wife that don't smoke. He's always going, oh, do... Whenever he meets any of my friends, if they're girls, he goes, are you a smoker, are you? Like that. <laughs> like, trying to, he's really actively pursuing a wife. Not a woman who would accept a husband who lives in a tree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's got to be... The main criteria is a smoker or non-smoker. <laughs> OK, welcome to your new home. Where is it? Is it somewhere behind this tree? <laughs> Guess again. <laughs>
again. <laughs> Look within the tree. <laughs> the arms lies within the tree. Yeah, he lives there in you the go. tree. Hang a school uniform on that branch. <laughs> <laughs> Pop it up on there. What time are you getting up in the morning? Here, don't go near them bloody fags or you're out, girl. They better not be your Lambert and Butler in there in that pencil case. <laughs> Ridiculous. Oh. Mind you, we've probably, uh, yeah, that it was all fictional. Should we say that case, you know, case we're libeling him or something? You never yeah. know, do you? Mind you. I bet he's got a good legal representation. I'd say so. <laughs> I imagine the yeah, team of legal eagles with the sound of us, Robert Redford, Tom Cruise out the firm. They'll all be there. There's a little imagine. bush near his tree, actually, where the, some of the big wigs hang out. <laughs> so I'm really, I think I'll see Rumpole the Bailey weeing in the lake <laughs> the other day. <laughs> Rumpole. <laughs> all right, Rumpole. Rumpole. What was that? That was always on telly. It was, was rubbish. I couldn't be bothered with it. Rumpole. It's like, it's just the theme music suggested, prepare to be bored. <laughs> oh, God. What about the most depressing theme music? What, Johnny Briggs? No, Coronation Street. How's that going? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Chill out. Come on, see what else he's on. I've never watched that programme. I just oh, hear that music. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a trumpet player drowning. Yeah, he can't be tears. bothered. He knows there's no point playing it. He'll drunk on whiskey, being sick down a trumpet. All, all bubbles of vomit coming out the end of the trumpet. Yeah, 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 yeah. My nan seems to, keen to find any excuse to talk about her boobs, says Elle. She always mentions that she has to roll them up into a bra because gravity has been unkind. I'm listening to your show from Houston, Texas. I wanted to say that your show completes my Saturday. I also wanted to offer my services towards the good of the revolution. I'd be more than happy to represent you here in Houston. I'm at your service. Well, if you just, you know, kill a congressman. <laughs> Not really. Only Matt in the bay. Get your nan to use her knockers to smother one. You all right, Matt? Yes. Funny little face you just pulled. You okay? <laughs> We've got Noel Gallagher coming up on the show. Guess Have what? we, though? You say I that. Don't know, Can you deliver be... on that? I don't know. He's, you know. he's not a reliable man, is he? He could, ring out. He could be sodding about with his family or something. He does that watch his match of the day, doesn't he? You, know, you lose him sometimes. It's difficult to get hold of him. Your two teams play the other day. Yeah, we did, and we lost one nil. Now, <clears throat> here we go. Perhaps you're looking for a gift for a friend or a lover or someone you have recently betrayed. Why not get this exquisite porcelain collector's plate lavishly decorated with precious 22-carat tw- gold? Compo from the BBC's Last of the Summer Wine. Other porcelain plates are available, I have to say that, because I noticed that in the corner it's a BBC product, so you could get another plate from somewhere else. For this is shameless. Well, yeah. <laughs> it's worse than the exercise bike. <laughs> oh, yeah. Good old exercise bike. My X-Cross exercise bike, what I go on for 20 minutes each night. Keeps me fit. <laughs> Oh dear. <laughs> Good old Lyndon, the provider of mixed snapped cross. ankle and laid there for an hour, <laughs> cursing that firm. <laughs> I had to chew my leg out of it like a fox in a trap. It's a bloody thing's lethal. I was trapping it over an hour. Oh, they'll come around and get it now. Look at you, mister, get me an Xbox. What? Can I just an say? Xbox 360, you say? <laughs> no one give Matt an Xbox. You don't deserve it. Don't give send him, one in, it'll be stupid. Give him Xma if you're going to give him something. It's what he deserves. Or PlayStation Little 3. Get- <clears throat> right, yeah, balance. Uh, what were you saying? Or a PlayStation 3. Or anything. Don't give him it a- anyway, because this is the BBC, licence, pass money, all that. Right. Get on with okay, your plate. so let's get on with this plate. <laughs> Compo. Listen to this, it's quite good. We'll never forget Compo, one of our all time favourite TV characters. He entertained us for nearly three decades, famously unsuccessful in his lifelong pursuit of Nora Batty. He never gave up hope of winning her part of her heart. Master craftsmen have meticulously reproduced every detail of this delightful montage of portraits on a fine porcelain collector plate edged with a gleaming band of genuine 22 karat gold. A must for fans of Last of Summer Wine. This collector plate is authorised by the BBC. Get another plate if you want. It can be yours for twenty nine ninety five. If you're not completely satisfied, simply return your plate within 30 days and, and owe nothing. Act now to reserve your plate. Demand for compo will be high. <laughs> <laughs> that we know. That's a given. We know people are clamouring for bits of old... They t- shouldn't have to say that. Because yeah. they should have made the right amount, the numbers. They've obviously done no market research. They don't know how many to make. What about that one you said? What was you saying about porcelain dolls just, of Diana? Yeah, of Diana, like yeah, the little sort of uh, statue, like of a figurine. Her. He went, buy them now because on August the sixteenth, the moulds will be smashed. <laughs> and then there was a little bit of it was on, it was an advert on the telly, like a hammer smashing, smashing the mould. Smashing the mould. Does she have to suffer again because of you? <laughs> You're worse than the paparazzi. What's your name, Henri Paul? Smashing up this statuette of Diana. Damn you to hell, you maniacs! 
you blew it up you blew it up so uh, if you want to get a kung po thing get one why if don't you don't, you buy one I don't with an act of one. hedonism and just eat off it that would be quite funny to have, like, have a big dinner party. <laughs> right, got my compo plates out now. Have your nosh off of compo. No one could forget compo. If they <laughs> bought this tasteless plate and stuck it to their wall. <laughs> Why would you want to commemorate compo? Why would you want to remember it? If you want to remember something, just remember it in your brain. It's no point buying a plate of something. Just remember it in your brain. The plate don't make no bloody difference, does it? You say that, but... Mm. I suppose all iconography and religion is based around the idea that, you know, you need a physical representation of spiritual or inner objectives. I suppose, Matt, one could argue I that. just glaze over when you talk like that. Yeah, well, take a good look at these guys, because it's the last you'll see of these. He's boop, showing boop, his boobs boobs I am showing my boobs. It's like Midnight Express. They're pressed against the glass. All those pictures of you that what? I noticed the other day when we were live from your house. Yeah? I looked at them today. What pictures of me? You, doing a photo shoot with some flowers, looking all wistful. Yeah, sometimes I feel wistful. What so you used for? People like to see me wistful, mate. You Holding know. a lily and looking ridiculous. A lot of guys out there, a lot of young girls, a lot of guys like to see me looking all oh, wistful. Just maybe imagine me singing, When I'm 64, you poor bastard. <laughs> <laughs> why, but seriously, why did you, what is that for? Because I like, well, I've probably what, just did you pay a photographer? I didn't pay I'm him. probably people... just some photo shoot, yeah, I do so many, yeah. I do a lot of shoots, guy. People are keen to record my every move yeah, and motion. Yeah, but that's stupid, because they must have said, well, hold that flower, now yeah. pull a face of regret. Hey! Wistful regret. That was a look of reverie and wonderment that no, I was doing there. I could see in the little <laughs> funnels you in mean? your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> well, that when we were doing Kerouac and they do things like look at, like get me to, when you do it, when you have to look out the window, you're like such a twitchy little self-conscious nit. Yeah, because me, afterwards I'd they go, oh, stare you, we're off. just going to shoot you here, um, look like you're listening to a conversation over there in the corner and there's not a conversation there. So Acting! Phoniness. What about lies. me? <laughs> JD Salinger. What I do is I look out the window, they go, Rusky, look all wistful. You take a look at me out there, just staring off, no, thinking. All, you can see what you're thinking. Just, this is going to look great. My fan club are going to love this. <laughs> look how wistful I'm being. I'm so bloody wistful. You can see in that flower photo. I'll you can give see you a I'll put, put this photo up in my uh, office. That'll be nice. Yeah, I'm looking at me. Yeah, sometimes girls, I feel pretty wistful. Well, oh, bunch I of actually that. made myself cry a real tear here. Yeah. Some say the world's too beautiful for one such as me. I don't know what you think, but take a look at how bloody wistful I was feeling that day. If you want to see wist, look no further. A lot of fellas, they don't Full know how it. to do wist. Wist! I'd believe it if someone took a photo of you and you didn't realise it was happening. And they went, mm. oh, Russell, the other day I took a yeah. photo of you and you were sat down in that park holding oh, no. a lily. You're joking. Oh, no, you didn't, because I was like, feeling so wistful. Moments. Oh, man, oh, no, you captured that. Look. Oh, no, look at me. Oh, no. Oh. I was thinking about Norma Jean that day. No, Goodbye, but Russell, Norma it's really Jean. nice. The one that knew you were that well. <laughs> <laughs> Norma Jean. So what if I'm wistful? What's wrong You're with not that? wistful, that's the point. I am. I'm wistful. All right, look at me now how wistful I am. When I'm 64. Should just be a picture of you sitting in a park texting. Wait, why? Because that's what you're always doing. I ain't always sitting texting. in a park. I, <laughs> I'm busy, busy with my files. I've got a lot on. Guess who's coming here later? Paul McKenna. Is he? Paul McKenna. Paul McKenna. Yeah, he's coming in here to promote something. You know, he's like using his Dr. Mesmer mind bending techniques. Just turns up here. Don't even tell the producer of the show. Just tells me, Russell, I'll be coming down to the show. Knowing I can't object because he's planted eggs, little mind bombs inside my brain. Do you still see him? I ain't seen him for a while because he's in Los Angeles and nobody could handle us, so I can't see him so much, can I? But, you know, I like Paul McKenna. I think he's a You still phone him. Russell! <laughs> oh, but that was well funny. When your Russell, belt broke. You're a great performer. <laughs> you're magnificent. You're one of the best entertainers in your genre. <laughs> in your genre? That's so funny. <laughs> you, out of you, no fielding. Um, Possibly Alan Carr. <laughs> <laughs> Alan Carr is on the show later, as is Paul McKenna. So, um, yeah, what should we listen to? Oh, no, it's the newsy poos in yeah, a minute. the news, isn't it? Well, might as well read some emails or something. Oh, God, I'm busting for a wee. Uh, do you want to... Pin Pin, everyone! Pin Pin! Keep the craze of Pin Pin going. A lot Someone of people... said that to me in public. Yeah, Someone said Pin Pin to you. I get yes. it. I love it. People say it to me. I was doing a job for this. You know this new TV show we're doing on Channel 4? It's on next Friday, recording it tomorrow. Like, the producer of the... Tr- Monday. Trail, is it? When's it? We're recording it on Monday, and then it's on the telly Friday on Channel 4. It's called Comedy Live Presents, something like that. Right. I think it's live on Friday, actually. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, live. Oh, that's right, I remember now. Live. <laughs> oh, yeah, 
I'm in bar, I'm in bar, she knows, that's when it happened when you're there. Uh, so anyway, yeah, the producer of that came up and went, pin, pin. People say it to me, it's good, really? isn't it? It's a good meeting, oh, it's a good greeting, I think. Pin, pin, we should say it to each other. Don't have to stab people with a pin, I think it's yeah. more important that people say it. Let's have it as the new hello. Pin, 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 because hello just came out of nowhere, didn't it? Just came through, it used to be an exclamation. Well, let's have it as chow, Hello. so you can use it for a greeting and also a uh, goodbye. What? Have it as what? Chow. Yeah, it's the like same chow. As chow. Pin, pin, yeah, all right, it's chow now, isn't it? Yeah? You don't have to stab someone with a pin unless it's well, maybe a very official situation. N- nip, nip, when you go. Nip, nip! I was dirty, I've got a new one. And then pinch people. Pins, pins! Like that. Why not? Mm. What are you looking at me like that for? It's a bit annoying. Of course it's annoying. Life pince, is annoying. Pince. You're going to end up dead in a grave. Pince How are you going to deal with that? Pincer! It was a pincer movement across Germany, the bloody old Nazis! Dearest Russ, Matt and G and everyone else, says Chris in a new forest. My nan responds with every single comment to anyone makes with, Oh dear. It's really funny because she doesn't even know she does it anymore. She says it to even positive things. How's your career going, for example? Oh, it's really good. It's going really well. Oh dear. Love you (laughs) and all the listeners. Oh, nice one, Chris. You are a positive man and we love you also. Freya Valentine. Speaking of the older generation, I had this conversation with my nan on the phone. Uh, This is Freya. She said, the nan goes, What are you doing? Making food. What? Making food. Oh, no, that's her, sorry. What? Making food. You'll have to speak up, ducky. I'm making food. Mending shoes. And then the girl just went, yes, to end the conversation. To make things simple. And this gives me a glorious opportunity to do my impression of Nana Moon. Alfie, Alfie, don't lift up me naughty, Alfie. Don't pull them to one side, Alfie. Don't breathe in me, Alfie. That's disgusting. Oh, Alfie. The voice is good, but the Grey candy floss, Alfie. (laughs) Grey candy floss, Alfie. <laughs> what? So what if I say Nana stuff out of my Moon. mouth? I like Nana Moon. Soon there's going to be a little show. What about when David Icke was front of the news? That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, here good. comes the news. Don't believe this stuff. It's a lot of old roop up. That sort of stuff. But we won't say that because mm. I don't know whether it's true or not. It's difficult. But I do appreciate that everything is just vibrations and energy. And we should be in tune with love. And it is a lot of flim flam and flotsam and jetsam. Was Professor Yaffle always go, Fiddle sticks and flop jam or something? Yeah, where is that? Get him to say it, Matt. We're doing the jingle competition later. No, not jingle competition, jingle race war. Later. Oh, yeah. fiddlesticks and flapdoodle. <laughs> He's a funny little guy. Flapdoodle. What does that even mean? That never caught on. We'll bring that back. Flapdoodle. Mm. What's that other word we were going to bring back? Drop-ins. I saw a fellow investigate my <laughs> drop-ins the other day. <laughs> Take your chopstick out of my drop-ins. <laughs> I've got a problem. I'll I want to bring back my drat. drop-ins. I'm always going on about drat. it. Drat. Yeah, oh, drat. Drat. Oh, drat. Yeah, all right, we'll try to bring that back. All right, okay, time for a bit of the old news. Later on the show, Paul McKenna, Noel Gallagher, one of my teachers, we might try and break a record. The Jingle Race War will be coming up. More of your emails. Thanks for staying with us. Keep calling us if you feel like it. We'll, shall we take a bloody call from someone one day? Yes. All right, that's we'll do it then. to talk to someone who isn't you. Hey, that hurts, baby, and it never stopped. Hey, pull my skin back. Take milk, take milk. This is the news. News, take milk. Sorry. Damage Goods, Gang of Four, you listen to Russell Brown on BBC Radio 2. I'm here, as always, with Matt Morgan. You're right, Matt Fu. Very well. You look well, I suppose. Mr G's over there, Poet Laureate of the show. Before Gang of Four, it were, of course, a bit of the old news. Guess who we've been joined by? How could you possibly guess? Because it's a secret still at this moment. Later on the show, we've got Alan Carr coming up. Noel Gallagher, if he answers his bloody phone. And, but actually now, here, physically here, Paul McKenna. He's just oh, there, Paul Gallagher. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, Oh, we'll never tire of him, never! Why, why are you touching your nipples? Because you're near, Paul McKenna, because you've <laughs> hypnotised me, and whenever I see you, you make me do a little bit of tit milk. Straight oh, stop out. saying tit milk. Why? why it's an got obsession. A, I don't think it's tit, even a rude word. Tit, tit milk, well, it's after ten, you can probably say tit milk. I think you'll probably say tit so. milk after ten. You can probably drink tit milk after ten. Would you oh. heat it up in the microwave? No, just have it direct from the tip. Straight out. <laughs> <laughs> I once, uh, there was a lactating one, woman once I was involved with. She hadn't even had a baby and weren't pregnant or nothing, but she lactated it. I must say, it was bloody brilliant. Did it uh, arouse you? It certainly did, actually, Paul. Oh, like, he's getting in my brain box now. He's <laughs> having a look round in me noggin. Look here, he'll say I'm a pervert or something. Now watch, go on, watch him go. Oh, what's that doing with my mum or saying? Is it you? You're the pervert, mate, you. You and your books, Dr. Are you, Mesmer. Are you going to bring the monkeys up? Yeah. 
probably bring up the monkeys. The monkeys, when Paul, we were playing a light-hearted game of if you had to have sex with an animal, which one would it be? All of us played in a rather light-hearted fashion. Max Paul had, had an flamingo. icy stare, didn't hmm? he? Paul McKenna's icy stare. Stare, did he? Monkeys. Monkeys. <laughs> monkeys. <laughs> monkeys like that. Then he made the shape of a monkey's vagina with his fingers and went, <laughs> <laughs> monkeys, monkeys, <laughs> like that. And then he put on a PG Tips advert on his laptop and started licking up the screen. Paul, down his trousers and pants. <laughs> and he was clearly a rat. You, you you say it like it's a bad thing. I know, Paul. Really, you're just expressing yourself, and why wouldn't you? You are Paul McKenna, mind doctor, Dr. Mesmer. But yeah, that lactating thing, very yeah. good, and like a lot of sexual things, very nice while the lactating milk is coming on to you, mm -hmm. but then after, of course, the point of climax, mm. you think, oh, Christ, my sheets smell so for yoghurt. <laughs> like that, you've got to deal with the pro. Hey, hey, that's the reality. That mm. is the reality. As Mr. G always says, after ecstasy, the laundry. Yeah, that's the way of the Mr. world. Mr. G. Well, he's a Buddhist, isn't he? He says things like that, and if the G will come out of it. Come on in, Paul, what are you flogging? Uh, I, do you know, I'm all flogged out uh, this week. I've, I've been and hoard myself on, mm. on the media, and so I just come in to see you tonight. Well, it's lovely to see you. It is lovely to see you. You've probably got a book out, I suppose, have you? Well, I, I, yeah, I have. I've, I've, mm. I've got another... I have got a, a, a... Actually, it's a revised version of my thin book. What a lot of tosh it probably is <laughs> as well, your thin book. What well, it? it was selling just a few more than yours last week, but yes. you... But Mine you've, sold millions but, already! But you've overtaken me again this week. Woohoo! Back on top, yeah. where I belong, see? <laughs> Look at me, I'm the Muhammad Ali of publishing. You can't keep me down. I'll come back at you. Well, but you see, now having mentioned it on your high-rating shows, this could be an own, own goal having me on. Um, mine may, you know, surpass you this well, week. Well, what about this for a little message? Don't buy Paul McKenna's book. <laughs> if you do, you are endorsing <laughs> paedophilia. <laughs> the ball of Paul, Paul McKenna's secret objectives is to create more paedophiles. That's all he's ever cared about. That's all he'll ever care about. <laughs> Not really, it's a nice man mucking about, sorry. So, uh, yeah. I, I, I think people will go out and buy it now in spite of that or to find out what the, you know, the terrible things are, isn't it? They will, Paul. I don't know if it's that popular. Perhaps you have been too long abroad, Mr McKenna, where having sex with monkeys and children is acceptable. But here in England, there are things we value rather more. Things like pageantry, honour, nobility, monarchy. Right, Matt? Yeah. There he goes, Matt Morgan there. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! So, uh, all right, hold on a minute. Let's, what should we talk about? Oh, yeah, we've been talking about how the elderly, bless them, mm. they've come out with something. Like, you know, people have been giving us emails about stuff that nans mm. say. Here, listen to this from Pammy in Southampton. My nan bought me Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire for Christmas. As I was opening it, she said, you can probably guess what it is by the shape. Then she went to say to my mum, you can exchange the VD at the shop if she's already got it, can't she? <laughs> oh, bless her, you oh. lovely old nan, bless you. Oh, she lived in a dream world. Do you think we'll end up like that? We won't understand technology in the future. I hate that idea, Matt. I hate the idea of growing old. What about that brilliant Alan Bennett short story where he talks about, like, old folks' homes being filled with people called Lil and Ruby and Rose. And he goes, and one one day, old folks' home will be filled with Kylie's and Darren. Yeah. Oh, but they're there, it's waiting mm. for them too. Darren's drooling into their beards and all this. Mm. Oh, God. Old Alan Bennett, he'll knock out some pay for us. Can we get him on here? Do you reckon he'd come on here? He probably wouldn't want to talk to us, would he? Let make him. Right, we're going to try and get him. Not tonight, it'll be a bed when he by now. Alan Bennett, you can't imagine that he's strutting around, kicking over bins, <laughs> sniffing glue in Camden Town. It's unlikely. Yeah. So, Old there, people. Paul, that's what we're obsessed with, I the did, elderly. Yeah, yeah, but you know the thing I, I don't understand is at what age do you, do, does it change? Because when you're younger, if you fall over, you say, I, I fell over. But when you're old, you have a fall. Yeah. <laughs> you start to die, didn't you? As soon as you fall down, uh-oh, onset of death. You know, just right there and then. But me, I read a good letter in this once. Old people, why, why do old people die when they fall over? They should take a leaf out of my book. When I fall over, I simply get up, brush myself <laughs> down, and carry on with my day. <laughs> really good. You had a fall the other day, didn't you? Yeah, I did, actually. I fell down two steps going into my kitchen and I landed sort of on my knee and I sort of suppressed the uh, yeah. urgent rage within myself. You know, I thought, I'm not going to scream, I'm not going to give my floor the satisfaction of letting it know yeah. that it's one. Yeah, Matt was upstairs. Made me hate Matt a bit because he didn't come mm. to my aid, mm. in the words How of simply... How would I have known? I don't know. I used to, as well, as a lad, Paul, and make of mm. this what you will, mm. so I was around with dads or something, I'd, go, like, I'd lay at the bottom of the stairs and wait for my dad. I could hear him out in the garden and mowing the lawn or something. I'd just lay at the bottom of the stairs and my dad would come in and see me laying at the first Go, right, all right, what's up? I go, yeah, I fell down the stairs. The whole thing was a fabrication. 
What about that? To get attention. Just wanted a bit of attention. Yeah. It's all I was after, Paul. Yeah. Is that too much to ask? Maybe Paul? that is why you've gone into show business. As, For attention. You know, literally from that moment it began. You wouldn't say that I've got a God-given talent at all, an incredible <laughs> gift with language, <laughs> performance and born. One of the best that. in your genre. <laughs> <laughs> One of the best. Of, like, oh, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, that's funny. That's, did you hear that? Uh, we told, well, Ricky Gervais called up this show once. Yes. And we're talking about you. And he goes, oh, he was like giving me some, like, before I was doing the DVD, when you spoke mm. to me once, you went, uh, okay, Russell, you, you know, and I phoned you out and my belt had broken. And I was about to go on stage and we had to delay the thing. Gee, I had to do half hour on stage yes, with bloody remember, poems. Yeah. He started doing WB8s in the end, wasn't doing his own bloody poems. Right? And uh, like, I was talking to you, I was like, oh, 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 Paul, I feel a bit freaked out. Oh, oh. And you go, okay, Russell, it's okay. Send yourself to think of a number 10. To talk yourself down. Everything's going to be okay. You're a great performer. You're a wonderful entertainer. You're one of the best performers. In your genre. We <laughs> <laughs> narrowed it down to about four people. <laughs> well, I just have to be careful if, say, another comedian uh, calls, you know, uh, a few minutes later. And then, yeah. you know, if I've said you're the best comedian, <laughs> then they, they might kick it off, you know? Yeah, well, it might. But how come I'm the one that ends up getting my feelings hurt? Mm, Paul. Do you I, need some more help? Yes, I do. I mentioned you, you in my bleeding does. bookie work. You, 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 do, you just mentioned <laughs> me. Several well. times. No, and I appreciate that, actually. What I really wish I'd done now is outed you <laughs> as a paedophile <laughs> and a pursuer of violent bestiality <laughs> with the Simeon Brotherhood. <laughs> so, uh, Matthew, we've got uh, Alan Carr coming up later on the show. We've got to get him on before McKenna starts rabbiting on, taking over things. I wonder if we could get you to do some... Dr. Mesmer-style trickery. Not really do that sort of stuff no more, do you? It's much more positive uh, thinking. Well, we could probably come up with something. I wonder if we could brainwash Matt into being a bit less of a pain in the arse all the no, time. No, I don't want anything done. Oh, I don't I'll change. People, no, I don't like hey, that people dabbing in my brain box. Look at you, you're yeah, like an old man yourself. Oh, no, I couldn't have that. <laughs> I wouldn't like that. You do say <laughs> that. Well, natural. You say things like a nan. What about that time when like, we were t- when these sexy birds turned up here to award me some award for being yeah. a sexy vegetarian? Yeah. Like, and then, like, Matt, there's this bit where Matt went, I goes, right, Matt, do a link. And he went, okay, and swallowed. He goes, look at you, swallowing, because you're all attracted to them girls. He goes, I was going to swallow them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> like he's got a swallow oh, schedule. No, I'm holding a little handbag on oh, my I'm chest. <laughs> yeah, he was like with your little clutch bag. <laughs> oh, McCarty up. Oh, stop it! You're looking at my boobies. <laughs> right, why don't we listen to what do you want to listen to? Dead or Soul, magic, magic number. number. All right, we'll listen to that. Then we'll talk to Alan Carr Crash. That's what I sometimes call him. I like that, but not picking in a bad way. I love Alan Carr. I think he's a fantastic comic, a brilliant man, sexy, adorable, exudes natural warmth, self-effacing. That's Alan Carr for you. So we're going to get him up. Right, but first, magic number. Then more McKenna, then Gallagher. Loads going on. Then the soul of the soul, magic number. Listen to Russell Brown on BBC Radio 2. You can text us on 88291. If you feel like it, we're here with Paul McKenna and his manager, Claire. Scarcely out of the tabloids, that woman, though. I ain't seen too much of her lately. You've been behaving yourself, have you, Claire? I've been keeping my head down. Yeah? Oh. Been loving angels instead, have you? <laughs> hey, hey, no, don't want to you know, give the game away, but she has a certain celebrity lover. She's made one or two advances in that area. Let me entertain you, Claire. <laughs> don't want to give the game away. Okay, well, actually, we've got Alan Carr on the phone. Let's not uh, muck him around. Alan, are you there, mate? Hello, love. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Oh, you're such a warm and lovely man. Immediately, I feel relaxed. And why wouldn't I? If everything's okay in the world. Are you all right, Alan? Yeah, can I tell you what my nan says? You know go what on. she calls a penis, my nan? Yeah, go on. What, mate? An ooja. <laughs> ooja. <laughs> Where's I she think that from? That sounds dirtier than cock. Yes, that does. <laughs> Apologise for Alan Carr, as we knew we'd have to. Yeah, Ujas. That sounds like Ujas. Where's that? Oh, she Ujas. Said, I look out the window, and I had tight trousers. I could see his Ujas. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to live her life, looking at people's Ujas. I don't know where that's derived very from. Only now, my granddad died. <laughs> oh, that poor man. He must have lived a miserable existence. That poor fella. <laughs> Alan, have you been all right, darling? Yes, I have. I've just been pottering about the house, you know. Where do you oh, live I'm, now? Do you live in... Person. Yeah, just that made myself a nice Thai green curry. Yeah, did you? That's quite domesticated. I know. Do you live the life of a bachelor? <laughs> yes. <laughs> a confirmed one, I'm no. afraid. Yeah, just sitting here looking through a JML catalogue, you know. Yeah, keep yourself out of trouble. Have you got, uh, have you got any pets or anything like that? 
No, no. Uh, we once asked Paul McKenna, <laughs> who's actually in the... No, no, I couldn't do that to you. No, we once asked Paul McKenna, who's in the studio, uh, what, for a laugh, we asked him, if you had to have sex with an animal, which animal would you have sex with? Paul McKenna began to salivate wildly and said a monkey. <laughs> His eyes glazed over. It was a terrifying <laughs> spectacle. But uh, I'd like to ask you the same question, Alan. Is there, if, if you had to have sex with an animal, is there one that you find particularly uh, alluring? I think a swan. Mm. Mm. <laughs> the grace, because the they're, elegance. They're so elegant, aren't they? They Can are. Can you imagine the children? The ch- <laughs> <That'd> be beautiful, <laughs> lovely little poor slim things. They'd be gorgeous, wouldn't they? But and as my you... glasses just balancing on their beak. <laughs> and perhaps your lovely toothy pegs coming out of a beak. That'd look glorious as well. I'd like that as a child. But you know, Alan, they're very fiercely protective of their eggs, a swan. Well, I am too, you see, so that's why it's a perfect match. It's a perfect match, two of you's protecting, broody pair, <laughs> you and a swan, be all lovely. Uh, hold on, so I've got something here that I need to... Oh, yeah, right, so, you know, do you go in much for this? Have you ever tried to have a hypnotist uh, dabble with your noggin, Alan? No, I haven't, but I like those watching them. You know those people, like, who have got so big of buttons, yeah. or like fish? And then by the end of the show, they're like rubbing a tin of tuna and they're cured. It's lovely. Paul McKenna used to do that as his job. Oh, but he I do, yeah. Drifted off into zoophilia eventually. Yeah. So, uh, what, uh, Is it true, though, that people are really scared of buttons? Yeah, so, some of them are. Um, I, did, I did actually one where this lady was uh, scared of jelly, and if you used to <laughs> wobble it, she'd go mad. And so, <laughs> I know, I, and, 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 and it's all amusing to us, but, it, but they there's are really There's a serious terrified. side to it, isn't there, Paul? There, there is. There's but, the, oh, come off it. No, Alan, there there's a are. serious side. Imagine <laughs> that, if you're being scared of jelly, it'd be like, hell! <laughs> what, she, what do you reckon's at the root of that? I reckon she was abused by some she, she blubbery, had... gutted what, perf. What about a trifle? Maybe she was um, interfered with by a trifle. He, no, we tried, no, we tried trifle. You know, it was, just came down to jelly. Right. Oh. And, and, yeah, it would be some incident in which um, jelly was involved and, and the trauma would have got associated in there. What, 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 how can you have a trauma involving jelly? <laughs> I suppose a child's party. I suppose Quite it's got to avoid yeah, jelly. It, yeah. Jelly is difficult. To, it's, it's not difficult to avoid. It's a good point, I Matt. When's the last, the last time, time you saw jelly? Around a tin of corned beef or something? It doesn't ever happen, it's does a, it? It's a child's party, I think. Yeah. It's like being scared of Ailey's Comet. Why bother? Just, just exactly. get on with it. You're never going to see it. Once <laughs> oh, no! I'm only another 72 years! Oh, I can feel it! It's about me! Ridiculous thing, isn't it? Alan, have you got any irrational fears? Um, I don't know, but is this irrational? I hate sharks. Mm, yeah, but it's irrational can, to hate them. That's not irrational, because they could kill you if you go, if you fall in its mouth. <laughs> I suppose so, darling, yeah. But you just, you just be careful. That's no, all I, I will say. say. You don't go wandering near a shark's mouth. Is that irrational, though? I, Paul McKenna, you're the expert no, on rationality. I, I it's a very healthy fear to have, but healthy. are there a lot in your area? Well, not in Upper Holloway. Um. <laughs> no. No, of course there isn't. He's safe no. as houses, isn't he? I, I, think, I think you're OK for now, yeah. If, he's, oh, if say, if he was uh, dreadfully afraid of female sex offenders, yeah. he's quite near Holloway Prison, yeah. so that would be well, irrational it'd be, it'd be a draw, It'd be a drawback to being in the area, yeah. Certainly would be. I often wonder what it'd be like to... Work. Have you ever uh, wondered what it might be like, Alan, to go into Holloway and just, like, mince about a bit, have a look at them, perhaps bang on the bars and go, hello, girls, you know, like bad girls or something, get them going. Oh, I could be like vinegar tits in prison cell blockade. Of course you could, given half a chance. If, you, if you're not held back by this ridiculous fear of sharks, there's nothing you can't achieve. It's getting in the way of you, Alan. Uh, Alan, what about your DVD? It's holding DV- you back, isn't it, Russell? It's holding you right back. Although, a tooth fairy, your DVD is, I believe, now the best-selling DVD in human history. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. That's a lie, but thanks for saying it anyway. I watched some of it. It's bloody funny. Oh, did you? Have you seen it? You're just saying it. No, I've got it. I'll go in my house. One of my mates had it. I goes, I'll borrow us that. What's your favourite bit? My favourite bit would have to be the bit where Alan Carr goes about, oh, yeah, no, I'm not going to come out with a ping-pong table out of Dixon's or something like that. He's sort of like, because his dad... Because what I like about... One of my favourite things is that uh, Alan's dad is like, a football manager. I'd like to say, oh, Alan had to grow up with a dad that wanted him to be a footballer. Look what he turned out to be. <laughs> you you remind me of Neil Razor Ruddock quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> <Alan>. <laughs> Yeah, so it's like, I think that's why I like that. I like mm. that aspect of old Alan Carr and his way. Oh, We're not talking about him like that. Who's been saying if Alan Carr crash? Oh yeah, me. But like only in a like you know like Alan Carr crash. I just like saying it. It's not in a. Is that derogatory? Shall I not say it? Well, 
Oh, no, I've heard worse. Yeah, I don't mean in a, a, in a rude or derogatory way. I think you're a wonderful comedian oh, and a beautiful that's entertainer. Nice, thanks, love. What about when I... Do you remember when I introduced you that time at Edinburgh when I was all drunk and on drugs and <laughs> was all that sick in my mouth and was causing aggro and bleeding and went, Oh, it's out of the car, you dirty paedophile pigs! I was like, like that, and then Alan had to go, Oh, dear, he's a confident young man. You know, he'd done about five gigs. He had to pull it all back together. What you did is you were so angry, you threw that Bacardi breezer and it smashed on the floor. Oh, yeah. And I was trying yes. to retrieve the gig, and then <laughs> the woman came up behind me with a mop and started mopping it down, and I said, don't you think I'm struggling enough? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I need you, then I'll be here. Mopping up the cardy breezes. Back and she's got me blow. I see Mr. Muffalo, I'm just like, whatever. Oh, but, well, so in a way, Alan, perhaps it, it's contributed to your huge success. I like to think, in a way, those early gigs there, <laughs> yeah. having to deal with hostile crowds. I ended up in Edinburgh Royal Infirmary that night because I had a fight with security. Ridiculous bloody business. Silly, oh, I was shouting no, me head I off. I wanted to kick your head in after that gig. I deserved it. So <laughs> someone needed to step in and do something. And then I went to Edinburgh Royal Infirmary, and there's these 14 year old boys in there. I give, I goes, yeah, oh, lads, here's 40 quid. Go and get some smack. Would you believe those children didn't come back with my heroin? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to say now. You are untrustworthy heroin dealers. Shame on you. Shame on you. <laughs> Alan Carr, you darling man. Thank you very much for coming on our radio show. It's always lovely to hear oh, you. Thank you very much, Matt. Have a lovely night. We will, dear. Take care there. Yes. Take care, watch out for the sharks, Alan. Bye -bye. Watch out for the sharks. <laughs> bye bye. A new job. <laughs> Ujar, the final word there from Alan Carr. Ujar, his grandmother's word for genitalia. Here's, uh, oh, look, here's a message. Russell, do you agree that Alan Carr sounded a bit like Professor Yaffle? No, because Professor Yaffle is very serious about things, isn't he? Like that? Yeah, he's not like that. What, like how I've done him just then? No, 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 he was like that, but he's right. not like Alan Carr. There's nothing like him. Completely he's not different. camping anyway. That's from John, Yaffle. who's just won at Monopoly, so he claims but we've got no evidence of that at all. Uh, hold on, this is an interesting... Uh, uh, email about Paul McKenna here. Uh, years ago, my mum got me, says, uh, KK. Bloody, that's a bit worrying. Oh, kin, because I thought, you know, if this is from the Ku Klux Klan, I'm <laughs> damned if I'm reading that out. Some of their beliefs are... Awful. Uh, dear Russell and Matt and G, a few years ago, my mum got me one of Paul McKenna's hypnosis CDs to stop me being nervous about my driving test. Ever since then, whenever I'm alone with our pet dog, I find it sexually attractive and try and touch his <laughs> anus. Lots of love, yeah. kin. Well, Paul! It's, it's a side effect that occurs sometimes. Well, why don't we have a little listen now to some of Paul McKenna? I think we've got some of his stuff, Yeah, we've stuff, got a little we? sample of one of your yeah, CDs. Uh, have have listen now? Be yeah. careful now, because this is deeply hypnotic and you could become a monkey pervert like Paul McKenna himself. <laughs> During this experience, it's best to be lying Look, down. Look at him trying to sound it's all mysterious. It's usually helpful to close your eyes. <laughs> you will not become <laughs> I'm trying to relax people. But there will be changes. Right, well, you're making All me feel you need to do <laughs> is relax. <laughs> at the end of this process, say that bar, can't you? Oh, you need to do is relax. <laughs> Amplify those rich feelings. Oh. You can find yourself <laughs> enjoying that. <laughs> Why do you do it? Why do you hang around zoos, tricking orangutans, monkey world of bandium? It's Paul McKenna there. That was a genuine bit of one of his CDs. The truth is out there. What a dirty devil is. Terrible. Why does he do it, do you think? Is it there for will be changes. There will be. You're not going to live as a monkey. Instead of unpeeling that banana, why don't you treasure my pleasure and get yourself some sexy leisure? So what should we have a listen to now, Mafu? Whatever you want. Look at the screen. I want to listen to that. Uh, Emma Pollock song Acid Test, I think it's called. Yeah. I like that, yes. Not Coronation the Coronation Street. Street theme. Yeah, let's have a quick listen to that. We were about that. It's a very maudlin song, the Coronation Street. The most Street. depressing music. Yeah, like yeah. this. It doesn't make you want to go to the north, does it? It does not, no. Not I mean, I love the people of the north and the I north know, of this but, country. But when you see that and then those terraced houses, it doesn't lift you up, does it? No, it doesn't, Paul. Aren't they made of chocolate? Oh, no, no, that's dear. Never. No, that's Willy Wonka. You're confused. <laughs> right, let's listen to uh, Emma Pollock now with her thing, Acid Test. She sing it out of math. she come here once, but I was in Hawaii, wasn't I? It's all right, like... <laughs> <laughs> 
It's Acid Test by the brilliant Emma Pollock. You listen to Russell Brown on BBC Radio 2. I'm here with Matt, E. Morgan and Mr G and, of course, Paul McKenna and Hello. his manager and tabloid trollop, Claire. <laughs> there oh. she is, sat over there. Are we uh, allowed to talk about what you were just asking Paul, then, yeah, in that song? Yeah, but I've got nothing to be ashamed of, mate. I've got nothing to be embarrassed You, you think Paul's like Father Christmas, then? <laughs> Paul, I'd like to be thinner. That's, that's <laughs> first. And also a world leader. <laughs> Look, there's nothing wrong with me getting Paul McKenna to train my brain to be a cult leader and oh, a cult messiah. Leader. Well, firstly, a cult leader. We'll get a nice island somewhere, get a load of people in the cult, creative people, develop an ideology oh, and we'll start we spreading the ideology over the world. Especially now I'm a crack shot. <laughs> What so, uh, what would the ideology be though? What would peace, the cult be based on? Peace, love, mm. yeah, a leisure society. Free love. Uh, the love will be at a small price. Paul. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not giving out for nothing. Some of my sexual moves. Mm. <laughs> That's just one of them. That's one of my oral ones. Uh, He's yes. not joking about that. What about the, the revolution? No, what? your oral moves. Yeah, well, I've got some good oral moves, you know. People, he treats a, a woman like a kazoo. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to sell these ideas to me. I make him sing. Goes, <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, if you've got the confidence to carry off these, some of these moves, try this one. This then women will be very polite and not say, what the hell are you doing? Because they're spasming, mate, in sexual glory. <laughs> try that one. And also try this one. <laughs> But you've got to commit to it. That's not sexual moves. It's a children's TV show between someone's legs. I forget. Somebody at the door. It's disgusting, Pete. Not loves. I finished. My sexual moves, mate, are second to none. I got trophies, trophies all around my house. Shag of the year. Vegetarian, what does sex of the year? I've got all sorts of trophies. Honestly, I reckon women just polite. Why would that be How polite? How can that work? Oh, because of the vibration. It's the, like, if you feel the noise of a vibrator oh, on your lips... <laughs> I want me pudding. <laughs> <laughs> he always wanted his pudding, that granddad. He was never truly meaning. happy. I want me pudding. I want me pudding. I want me pudding. <laughs> you can't have your pudding. Calm down. What's going on in this show? Listen, Matthew, you know the noise a vibrator makes or the feeling of a vibrator on your lips? No. <laughs> <laughs> You can recreate that with your own brilliant sex moves, if you mean. Why don't you just or buy anyone. a vibrator, you type I've got kit. one. I've got hundreds of the bloody things. They're everywhere. Put, well, get one attached to like your forehead like inch. a miner. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> like a little miner's light, but a vibrator there. Oh, well, uh, I'm a unicorn! I'm a unicorn! This is unipole for you! I got a letter here. It's from someone calling herself Scarlet. Here, out it go. My auntie had a fear of buttons and she thought she'd been buttoned into something in a past life. Love the show, Scarlet. Is that true, Paul? Could she have been buttoned into something in a past life? Could well, it have happened? Anything's possible. Anything's possible. I know about fear of buttons. I what? knew someone who had one. How did you know It's anyone? because when you're a toddler and your cardigan's done up too, too tight. Too tight, restricted, so you, isn't it? you associate buttons with uh, feeling... You're scared of buttons, mate. No. Yeah, you are. I'm not. You're nervous. <laughs> you're nervous. Stop <laughs> saying buttons. <laughs> Look at my fly. Is that getting you going, That's mate? That's a zip, you fool. Yeah, it's a zip. <laughs> <laughs> you're loving me now, aren't you? That is feeling it. Here's one from Grace Guest. That's what her name is. Nice name. After an awkward silence watching Di's hearse on the TV at the funeral for Lady Diana at my mum's house, my grand Sadie was the first to feel the awkward silence. I think it's terrible how she was chased by them pepper army on bikes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a bit of an animal. That silly, silly man. God bless her. Aww. What would we do without them lovely elderly people? That's nice, isn't it? Right, oh, jingle competition. Should we do the jingle? Oh, not jingle competition. It's not the competition. Jingle race war. Competition to band on the BBC. That is why we're doing our unique jingle race war. This week, it's Islam v Christianity. So let's uh, have a listen to some of the entries for our jingle contest. Should we listen to the first one, Matthew? Erno... Oh, what's his name? Erno... <laughs> Perainen. Who's a geezer's name? <laughs> uh, no, Perainen, this is our jingle race war. We're trying to find good jingles for our show. What happened to that gay one that I liked? I never hear it no more. Which one? I don't know, we found one that we'll we liked. We'll find it again. Oh, what's wrong with you? Oh, Concentrate, damn, balls up all those Smith songs, playing Professor Yaffle over right, we've them. we've got the gay one. Can't do your actual job. Do you want to hear the gay one that yeah. you like? Yeah, yeah. Gay! Hello and welcome to my regular item, Gay. If you've got a problem with gayness, perhaps I can help you with You that only wanted problem. to hear the jingle. It wasn't the start of the whole well, piece. It's professional. If you hear the jingle, like you've got to do the thing. Um, it's because of McKenna dabbling in me noggin. That's why that is. Aha, here's someone with a gay problem. Uh, 
Kind regards, Andy Phillips. I've been going around pretending to be gay in the hope of getting fag hags to grope and generally get some attention off them. I, an old man I met in a gay bar said he'd look after me in the vain hope that he could one day have his way with me. So as I am a dosser, I thought it was too good to miss and moved into his house straight away. He does all my cooking and cleaning, washes my clothes, he takes particular care of my underpants, tidies the room he gave me. The trouble is I can no longer get any women and being gay is now ruining my life but without any sex of any kind. Should I ride it out and see what happens or go back to live with my mum and dad? Well, good scheme, pretending to be gay, because I've always noticed that the, the tendency of women to let gay men touch their boobs. And I've always been against it, very much against it. Have you seen that, Paul? Gay men, they will let a woman touch their... Like, a, a woman will let a gay man touch their boobs, won't they? <laughs> <laughs> won't they? Well, yeah, well, I don't know. I they think do. They for it. Right? Like, go, oh, hello, yes. And like, then the, the women go, oh, can I, t- oh, can I touch them? Oh, I don't know what all the fuss is about. Come on, we've all seen that. And really? I think, yes! It's happened! Right, listen, Claire, you're a woman. Now, when you're not whoring your way around Hollywood, <laughs> perhaps you've spent some time with gay men. Do they ever touch your boobs? As Absolutely. A... Yeah, right, gay, proof. The gays, they're always at it. They're always at it, But the gays. women let straight men have sex with them, so maybe you're aiming too low. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear! If only I had loads of trophies endorsing all of my moves. <laughs> 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 Are you there, that love? <laughs> nearly there. <laughs> Hang on, I'll do a fire engine. <laughs> nee, no. <laughs> Are you enjoying this, dear? I want me pudding. I think that this gay lad is on a very good number anyway. So, uh, I yeah, think he's keep lying. It up. He's made that to impress us. But what a creative young man he is. So, he's got a sugar uh, daddy. He deserves a girlfriend or whatever he wants. And actually become gay, have it off with that bloke, and that'll be a laugh. Right, now it's time for our jingle race war. Uh, to fo- you know, As you saw there, we use the jingles that win this contest. I mean, race war. So, let's now have another jingle. This one's by a lad claiming to be called Erno Prunanian or something like that. The Russell Brand Show with Matt and Mr G Two hours of good time Too long! It's too long! That's all right. It's OK, but it's like it's made our show sound a bit like Oh, hello! Like we're all whimsical or something, mm, don't it? Also said two hours of good times for free. When, in fact... Highlighting the fact that we do this for free. What do you mean? Well, well we do, people we... get it for free. Good of us to do that then, yeah. is it? Well, no, it just rubs it in a bit. You can get money for <laughs> what this. What do you want? My money? Pay us. There'd be commercials in it. No, no, we wouldn't do that. It'd be either. awful. We'd hate it. All right, listen to this. This is from Nathan Jackson. This is his attempt at a jingle. All right, ready? Yep. Russell. Oh, up there. Yeah. The troubles and trio. Ah! And comedy, too. So keep your ends open. Right here on Radio 2. Not it's bad, but it's... a bit like the Nickelback problem, isn't it? It is a bit like... Yeah, the... Russell! Oh, 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 hey, hey, Marty McFly! <laughs> well, what I don't understand is why, like, these people are not listening to the jingles that already exist and then using that as a basic template, are they? Because they're creating all new genres well, or something. you're a teacher. Yeah, I am, mate. Read the question, kids. <laughs> Come on, it's in the question! <laughs> why would they do that? How many apples? What does Barry want? What does Barry need? What does stratification mean? None of it means nothing. Don't bother going to school, it's just indoctrination, turn you into an automaton to make you function as part of a unit. Join the revolution, join the revolution. <laughs> Listen to this by someone claiming to be called Neil Arnold. And it's a, actually, it's a, uh, it's a jingle for Matt Morgan there. So let's have a listen to this. It's number 40. Matthew, Matthew. Hello, Russell. No, yeah, all right, it's nice that you've turned up. Matt Morgan. <laughs> Sounds like someone having a breakdown. Still going. Sounds like he made it out of offcuts. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? In a butcher shop, bit of bacon rind, bit of chicken skin, bit of old kidney, stick it in a post box. Neil. Put it in a nappy. Neil, you're wasting your time. Right, here's one for Noel Gallagher, who we will ring up. Let's ring him up in a minute, see if he's there. Can you try and get Noel Gallagher on the blower? Poor old sod. Antonia Manette, this is one for Noel Gallagher. Let's have a look It's this. Noel Gallagher! My slightly effeminate oh, weird mate. Look, how come did you start with top? I'm keeping my text. That's an outrage. She did not know that, and I couldn't be less bothered. <laughs> you're an idiot. <laughs> what? I'm having a poo. Ooh, I don't remember him saying that. He's never said that. I'm having yeah. a poo. When did he say that? At uh, Wallem's party. At Wallem's party? Oh, yeah. Didn't you make him go up to someone and say that or something? No, I don't know why he would do a thing like that. Let's get him on the phone. We'll talk to him. I might go and see Morrissey with him on Tuesday night. You're coming begrudgingly, Matt. You might want to come and see bloody Morrissey, McKenna and Claire. I, I can't. Claire can try and have it off with him. McKenna? <laughs> 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 you busy, are you? 
you're yeah, in it's, LA. Yeah, LA. You're in LA, best place for you, you pervert. <laughs> right, okay, so yeah, we'll try and get Noel Gallagher on the phone. Is he answering the phone? He's not answering. What's wrong with him? Where Can is I, he? What he's watching? Listen to another jingle. Okay, we're listening to another jingle. I want to listen to my other one. What do you want to listen to your other one? You're such a sport brat. Who's it by? This is by Matt Goldhill. <laughs> what a square. Matt Morgan, what are you? Matt Morgan, what are you do? I like the Matt sentiment. Morgan, this is really making me reflect on what I am. Yeah, it's good. Morgan, I'm glad someone's had that Matt effect Morgan, on you. The original victim, Matt Morgan there. So that's quite good. I quite that's a creative that one. one, that, wasn't it? Quite good, yeah. I liked it because it, yeah, pathos, melancholy, no. made Matt ask what he is, which is something that needs to be done. I'm sure we'd all agree with that. It's all smug. It's beautiful, actually. Cosseted in his own identity, a bit too pleased with himself, <laughs> and he's there, all nice and uptight. <laughs> right, okay, should we listen to uh, a record or something? Yep, Queens well, of the Stone Age. Yeah, stick it on. And then uh, after that, we'll, start, we'll hear Mr G's poem, we'll see if we can get an old Gallagher on the phone, and answering them, and we'll try, let's try some of his other phones, try his house in the countryside, let's get him, track him down like a dog. Remember, the, <laughs> well, what about when they, they used to spit? Do you remember some of the behaviour of Oasis? Uh, full of them, so, yeah, best band in the world, oh, taking drugs like a cup of tea, oh, kicking a kid in the guts, that's just like saluting the Queen. Yeah, arrogance, breathtaking, let's bring him down a peg or two, yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Should we listen to, uh, what is it, Queens of Stone Age? Yeah, feel good hit of the summer. Feel good hit of the summer. Why are you looking at me like Give a little old Give me a clear cue, that's what I'm... OK, well, listen to this then. You, you go, shall we, radio. shall we? Oh, right, Do you want me to get the tray <laughs> or the biscuit? <laughs> Just tell me when to press the button. <laughs> oh, dear, I don't Dodging know about fool. I don't know if I trust him, his eyes are too close to get for... Well, all right, then, I'll give you a clear uh, cue. Right, we'll be talking to Noel Gallagher later. I've enjoyed very much the... Ah! Feel good here at the summer, that's Queens of the Stone Age, it's Russell Brown, BBC Radio 2. Who'd believe that I just sprinted back from a lavvy? No one would because of the old professionalism, the professionalism you get when you listen to the Russell Brown Show, Radio 2. We've won loads of awards for this podcast. Mm. Won, uh, best podcast, didn't we? It's a radio <laughs> show, it's a radio <laughs> show. It? Oh, yeah, yeah, but it's a podcast when the person that's listening to this bit's listening to it. Radio show at the moment, yeah, do you know what I mean, mate? It depends how you see the, the linear nature of time, you know, that depends how you look on things. Doesn't it, Paul? Doesn't it, though? Yeah. They are, that's Paul <laughs> McKenna's confirmation. That's all any of us have ever needed. He's the daddy that we never had. He's the daddy that gives you grey see through tip milk, nurtures you, makes you raise up other than an eagle, so he does. Come on, Paul, give people some advice to make them feel positive about the world. Uh, what now? Um, uh, oh, all right, well, think about, think about all the good things in your life. What, like? Well, like, who Matt, loves G. Who, <laughs> who loves you? Uh, Mum, she loved me, yeah. Morrissey, the cat, yeah. Morrissey, the pop singer. What have you got, what have you got to feel happiest about? Uh, I've like got nice hair. Nice hair, yeah. Anything nice, else? Yeah, nice uh, hair. What, make, what, 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 what makes you feel motivated? Uh, the revolution, the idea of overthrowing the government. Fantastic. And what, what, of spirit. What, uh, what do you feel grateful for? Uh, I've got a lot, I've got a nice tummy. I've got, oh. I'm really good in bed. <laughs> I'm really good at sex. I've got a really good mood. really good at doing noises. Hey, whoa, stop it. The noises in themselves are quite sexy. Here's an email. Michaela Strachan has a pet monkey or chimp. If she has one, why can't you, says Amy. Obviously, that question is directed at me, not Paul McKenna, for whom the answer would be only too obvious, because he'd have sex with it against its will. <laughs> Here is uh, an email from Joanne Haswell. Dear Russell, I believe you are a keen, to, uh, a keen adoptive parent of Monkey World. So am I. I love the place. I adopted Peanut, the golden cheek gibbon, for Christmas. I got my husband some gibbons as well. My mum, Sally, got sisters a stump-tailed macaque, or whatever they're called. I believe you're keen to try and see Jeremy the next time you go. I've seen him in the park. Jeremy's a monkey handler, not in a mm. Paul McKenna way, in a proper professional, <laughs> legit way. I'd also recommend that you go at ten in the morning. This is when the gibbons sing to each other. It has a really fantastic uh, sound. It echoes all around the park. I think you're doing a fantastic job bringing people's attention to Monkey World and the wonderful job they do. If you ever fancy some company on your next trip down there, please give me a call. I'd happily spend all day there and sometimes it's quite difficult to find people who consider it as fascinating as I do. That's Joanne Haswell's words. Well, I like it down Monkey World. Matt, do you want to come down Monkey World? Yeah, I've never been. It would be nice. It's actually. lovely. It's brilliant fun. Monkeys, as far as the eye can see, carrying on. I told you, didn't I? One pooed in its hand to try to write on the wall with its poo, like a little artist. Did it really? It did, mate. I watched it do it. Just, it just pooed in its own hand and caked it on the wall like it was no Children thing. Children do that. Yeah, I know. It's expression. It's good, isn't it? I say I started out and look at me now. Barely moved on. <laughs> 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 Nothing's changed. Right, hold on, we've got something very important. Let's get G to do his poem. G, you finished your poem, mate. Please welcome now, poet laureate of this show, Mr. G. Oh, yeah, we've got to promote that thing. Right, here he is, Mr. G, Mr. G. Woo! Yeah, Mr. G. <laughs> <laughs> 
OK, this poem is called Last of the Summer Tip Milk. <laughs> well done! <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, I'm leaving. In a realm where old friends tend to greet, shoulders are bumped thrice indiscreet, co-host and poet take seats, awaiting for Yafel to speak. Who's, who's in the bag? Take a peek. As Topsy's dropped with a squeak. Maybe the mice can fix Nana's pipes with some old therapeutic treats. Bringing flap doodle droppings and drat back into our lives. Genically speaking, Pin Pin is reaching a new millennium high. As McKenna hypnotizes, Alan Carr swans along for the ride. Brrm! Sounds like someone is noshing off compo with a full plate and a smile. <laughs> Mr. G is incorporating the whole show. What an incredible talent. Andrew Motion sounds so dickhead or something, can he? Well, he's a proper poet. Mm-hmm. Matt, do you remember when we watched that film that we was watching? What was it called? Uh, the football film, In the Hands, in the of, hands the gods. of the Gods. About them doing what you always refer to. It's people doing ball juggling, young footballers from around Great Britain, working class Soccer lads. Soccer skills. Going off on a tour. So you Tricks. All, silky skills. You always call silky it that. Silky skills. Like that's its proper name. What do you call it? Ball juggling. Ball juggling. That doesn't keepy have any football. You don't say silky... Well, you can say silky skills, but you say it like an old nan, as if that's his name. Oh, I see some boys doing silky skills <laughs> at the bus stop. I couldn't relax. That's what you call doing trumpet noises between someone's legs. <laughs> My silky, My silky skills. skills. No, it's good, though, isn't it? I've come! <laughs> <laughs> oh. What, what, what? It's good, isn't it? Oh, that get film. that film, yeah. In it the is actually brilliant. Of the gods, good it is. Brilliant documentary, and it's on made DVD. that? Was it one of your mates? <laughs> what? <laughs> that film made by Matt's mates is good. It is so brilliant. Other films though. It was a bloody good. We haven't watched it all the way yet because we had to come here, but we watched the end of good it documentary. later. Good documentary. Good documentary, very well made, beautiful, a beautifully shot, nice characters in the hand of God. I think it's doing quite well anyway, isn't it? Even without us. Yeah. I saw two lads from it doing some ball juggling or what you'd call silky skills, silky skills on uh, Upton Park at some match or another. I can't remember who it was, but I spoke to them afterwards. Very lovely lads. They deserve all the success they get if you ask me, you know. Right, so uh, Paul McKenna, thank you very much for coming here. It's lovely to uh, see it's you. It's always good to see you. Do you think you can elevate me for now that I'm a best selling an author mm. and uh, you know won all these awards for mm. sex and vegetarianism and whatnot. Mm. Do you think you can Could take you lower that? his ego? <laughs> <laughs> I need that ego. You, you you are work in progress, I'd say. Yeah, but I He's, mean, as a human. Oi, what, <laughs> <laughs> but hold on, I think I can aspire to great heights. You know, it's about yes. time there's a revolution, ain't it? Absolutely, I can, I can see you. You know, uh, in, in fact, mm. you know, you could see this whole show as a sort of uh, as a calling to your people. You know, very much. I mean, you 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 have a cult following, don't you? Oh yes. Yeah. I've so got... you're you're basically building up to starting your own religion, aren't you? Pretty much. That's always been the aim, Paul. Mm. Yeah, just to bring enlightenment and joy into people's lives. What's your mm. little face looking like? That Maybe for? I might set myself up as your nemesis. You, my nemesis. <laughs> This a lovely yeah. lad like you, Lucifer, the fallen angel, against me after everything we've been through. I'm just gonna have a black and red version of all your clothes. It'll be all evil. Have you... a little very thin moustache. Oh, horrible pig! Fancy yep. even thinking that after what I've put up with you, jumping through that sw- swimming pool cover, letting off that fire extinguisher in the dead of night. Lies. That's the sort of revolution I'll be leading, not your boring one. Hey, my one's about spiritual hey guys, enlightenment and on. love and shotguns. You said the other day, or on the way here, you go, I'm like I walk around the streets with a gun, shooting people. Because I don't think that's the answer. I was playing a computer game. Uh, you, wouldn't, you were talking about actual life, you daft sod. I thought it was Noel Gallagher ring and it's just a taxi Does company. he actually know you anymore? <laughs> no, I don't. We've not spoken for some time. There's a it's lot been of ages, there. hasn't it? We've, yeah, no, I really want to talk to him, actually. No, I've been texting him because I think he's going to come and see Morrissey on Tuesday at the Roundhouse Camden, Morrissey Plan. I'll have you know, Morrissey's wearing a West Ham top. I secretly think that he's wearing it to communicate with me. Yeah, what? say this every week. Look at G and Matt looking all bored as if I'm not the most wonderful man ever. You've said that three weeks <laughs> on the trot. What? Yeah, so what? I'm just getting the message out there. That's what you're doing, it. Repetition, Paul. It's part of it, isn't it? It's yeah, important. So it's a repetition, the mother of success. Repetition, the mother of success. Gutted! You are so gutted, you little virgin! <laughs> 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 right, oh! OK, so next week it's going to be a fantastic show. Who will probably come on it? Noel Gallagher. Hey, we're just trying to get bloody Noel Gallagher come on this show. What's wrong with him? Let's get him in here. Let's get him physically in this room, sit him down and make him have a word with himself. Yeah, he's got to come round here. Another PA. He retired. said he lived around the corner once and another then he never PA came again. Gone. He did, he came round here, he said he was giving me a toy Rolls Royce. Never What's that about? Never what? My PA, another PA resigned, dropping like flies. Now. <laughs> I don't know what it is, Matthew, why can't they That's the first to the resign, job? isn't it? Well, it's not a resign, sort of a teary slamming down of the phone. <laughs> Why do you do like, why do you you like those phone calls? <laughs> <laughs> Don't say that. That's a person what? with feelers. Sound like Scooby Doo. Sound like Scooby Doo. You're a psychopath. A huh? Hang on, lady just shouted at me. Why well, employed? <laughs> has rights. Sound <laughs> like Scooby Doo. But I love you, Scooby Doo. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Scooby Dooby, don't expect severance pay. <laughs> oh God! Oh come on, we're all living life. This whole show's put together by a disgraced vicar's son. Why, Nick? You're He's not disgraced. To death. He is a disgrace. He can't sleep at night because he is a disgrace. He worries. He's got the weight of the world on his shoulders. What weight? The second coming. Oh, the second coming. Me? No, you no, mean? No, he is. Coincident. He's not the second coming. You're, Look at him sitting there. He can't even do his basic bloody job about causing the great big palaver. One time, chain reaction Sterling by Diana Ross job. come on here. Diana Ross came on here once. She was away on holiday. You can't do your job. I Nickelback can, came on here is, earlier because well, of you. Well, this is me doing my job. This is literally me doing my job to a very high standard now. And if you can't take it, perhaps you might like to meet the boys. Yeah. Have a look at those guys. If you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Gee, craning forward as if you need to crane forward to see that. What are you looking at? He wants me to do this. <laughs> 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 uh, I'd like Professor game. Yaffle to peck your genitals off. So would I. <laughs> what a wonderful <laughs> moment that would be. Just before it was seven, I'd think, oh, you dirty little woodpecker. Crikey. So, Paul, well, thanks very much for coming on and oh, pouring yourself you. further. Yeah, I, li- I like to do that, thank you. I hope your mum's listening to the show. Your mother. You know, I like... hope her radio has broken this mm. evening. Because she, she, of course, said when Paul came on the show recently, I didn't like you being on that show, Paul. I think it demeaned you. <laughs> <laughs> really serious. <laughs> it demeaned. Really serious. Word. All we said is that he is reaching across the evolutionary bridge <laughs> into monkey genitalia. That's all we've ever said about Paul You're the McKenna. one who goes to monkey world every week. I like those monkeys. I like them. I've never thought of them. I don't fancy monkeys. I think Testing your little technique. <laughs> <laughs> Between their little hairy pair of legs. It's like a shrimp's tea party. <laughs> Give us a fondant fancy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, it is a bit like a kazoo. Right, OK, no, I'm doing quite well. Look at me professionally wrapping up this whole show. Thank you, Oliver Postgate, you brilliant responsible love broadcaster. Him. We actually love you. For all the gifts he gave us. Let's go to Canterbury we'll Museum enjoy. and look at the original yeah. Bagpuss. I wanted to buy it. Oh, like, we spoke to Oliver Postgate, creator of yes. Bagpuss, and I was going, hey, can I buy the original Bagpuss? How did I do it? Postgate, I like your voice. I'm going to buy you. Yeah, why don't I pay? I'd like you to sit around the house and talk to people after they've just orgasmed into my face because I'm a trumpeteering. Would you like to... <laughs> I don't think I'd be interested. Come on, post-gay, give it a chance, man. Ah. He was lovely, wasn't he? What a gentleman he was. What an inspiration to us all. Lovely. Especially me. Especially me. Who else come on? Alan Carr. He was absolutely fantastic. What should we do next week? We've done well. I liked all that talking about things Nan said. Good, wasn't it? Yes, brilliant. Good item. Is this a production meeting? Yeah, let's on do it. <laughs> <laughs> suppose so, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Right, there'll be some news on in a moment. David Icke would, of course, say it's filthy propaganda and lies, but some of it may be true. We had Icke on here the other week. Oh, he's oh, great, isn't he? He's lovely. I, we yeah. quite like him. I like him a lot, but then he always goes a little bit too far, doesn't well, he? Do you know, I, I found a lot of what he said made sense, but then I said, look, I just can't, I can't believe the lizards. No. And, he yeah. said, but, and then he said, but this is a, what a fantastic answer. He goes, I know. <laughs> I'd have had a, an easier time if I hadn't actually brought the lizards up. And so, you know, I mean, I just, I felt I had to say it, you know, and, and, and risk the, uh, all, all the trouble. I thought, yeah, and I found myself, lovely you know, go, going along. You know? So yeah. he did, uh, and he actually he's a lovely home. guy, yeah. Yeah, he's a truthful nice. man, he's doing what he believes in. Let's yeah. honour David Dyke. Yeah, I know, I should never mention them lizards. Thanks, all of you, for listening. Thanks for making this probably the best radio show there's ever been in history. Certainly the best franchise. Stay with us, listen to us next week. Always download the podcast. Bear the revolution in mind. I actually love you from the bottom of my gorgeous black Nazi heart. Hare Krishna. <laughs> what? I love you, what? What? <laughs> <laughs>